me go to Stuart uh, Hosey. Nicola Sturgeon has said, you know, I think she said it again last night in the debate, if not the one before, they're all kind of merging into one at the moment. She said that we should lead by example, uh, by unilaterally scrapping Trident. That's what she said. So which countries do you think would follow our example? Well, I think the principle that Nicola did was absolutely right. You know, we can't uh, say we want to remove nuclear weapons and then keep hold of our own that simply no. doesn't so, work. so which country Listen, would which I other countries it, would follow our example uh, well andrew if uh, we don't pose a threat to other people then uh, there's less of a requirement for other people to want nuclear weapons so it's give me an example then of which country for... would follow our example if we scrap our deterrent well which country would follow our example well we'd have to see wouldn't we but the well, point she is, said it you can't say you want to you, you can't want to remove nuclear weapons and then hypocritically argue to keep a hold of them. But the substance of this today isn't whether or not we remove Trident and its replacement. That will be voted on in the next parliament. The substance of today is the ridiculous language from Philip Hammond and Michael Fallon. Philip Hammond was talking about people... Yeah, yeah, but excuse me, Mr. Hosea, that's not what I'm... I'm asking no, 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 you no, no, about no, no, the no. principle of nuclear yeah. weapons, not, not about their language. Yeah. So let's just stick stick with well, this line. Let me give. Let me well, see if I can help the you. Principle if we of try to find... No, no, excuse me, Mr. Hosea, you want to abolish nuclear we weapons, so let's look the at the logic them. of it. That's, I'm talking about the principle. Yes. I'm not talking about parliamentary tactics. It's a principle position your party has. So let's look at the principle. Do you think, for example, that Russia would follow our example? It's just increased its defence spending by 50%, including an extra 33% for its nuclear arsenal. Do you think Russia would follow our example? Well, are you arguing that Russia is a threat and they're going to bomb the UK? No, I'm trying is to find out really if saying? we get rid of our nukes, who would get rid of theirs? If not Russia, do you think China is just going into a massive new investment in new nuclear submarines and mobile nuclear missiles? Would China follow our example? Well, I would hope that countries around the world would feel rather less threatened because no one would be pointing or threatening to point nuclear weapons at them. That's the principle of this. You can't argue for less nuclear weapons, Andrew. And then hypocritically keep them. Would, and I'm, I'm surprised you don't well, want to talk about the story of Who else would Pakistan follow our example? Pakistan, Pakistan is now involved in a multi-billion-dollar investment into battlefield nuclear weapons. Do you think Pakistan would follow our example if we got rid of Trident? Well, Andrew, do you think Pakistan would uh, think about getting rid of them if we kept ours? The whole point about the unilateral disarmament argument is it removes a threat. It removes a threat and it stops other people requiring to gear up, scale up and have an arms race, the likes of which we saw in the Cold War. None of these weapons were ever used. They oh, destroyed so that, that real may be jobs. A good, it's quite good they that weapons are in the economy. That may be the and best, that may be the best right. kind of weapon to have, and one that you don't right have that to we use. Get rid of them. Well, let me ask you oh, well, this. Listen, if, if, these are... if it's a moral position, let me ask you this. Where is the morality? in saying you get rid of our own nuclear deterrent, but still be prepared to shelter under the NATO nuclear deterrent. The vast majority of NATO members, Andrew, as you know, are not just non-nuclear, they're avowedly anti-nuclear, but it makes sense to be part of, it makes sense to be part of a But they are prepared alliance. to be part of a Most nuclear deterrent. In that includes Norway, it includes the other members of NATO, it includes Turkey as well. Are you prepared to be under a nuclear umbrella? Do you still want to be defended by nuclear weapons? Sorry, Andrew, I think it makes sense to be part of a, a defence alliance. Of it's a nuclear it defence. the vast majority... No, Andrew, the vast majority of the countries do not have nuclear weapons. Only three hold them But they are all defended, NATO. but we excuse me, they're all defended by a NATO nuclear first strike policy. That is uh, NATO's Andrew, policy. Are you, you prepared to be defended by that or not? It's a simple uh, question. And, uh, uh, Andrew, uh, we would be like every other country bar two. That is to say, in NATO, very sensible, this is not correct. but not holding or using nuclear weapons. Is that is correct? absolutely correct. Okay. The Foreign Secretary says you're not correct. Let me go to correct, Mr. Hammond. Stuart, because there are other NATO countries that, although they don't have their own nuclear weapons, they do host US nuclear weapons on their soil. They carry them in their aircraft. Uh, do you think we should do that? Do you think we should host someone else's nuclear weapons if you don't think we should have our own? 
Well, our position was always there should be no nuclear weapons on Scottish soil or territorial waters. We hold by that. I think that's very sensible indeed. NATO. But, but I, I, I don't understand the morality of saying we will not defend ourselves with our own nuclear weapons, but we're happy to be under the American nuclear umbrella. Where is the moral principle in that? The morality, Andrew, is that we shouldn't have weapons of mass destruction, indiscriminate weapons of mass destruction. That's the morale question. So the why join NATO? The question is we can't afford to have them. Why right? join because NATO? Because it makes sense to be because it makes sense to be in a defence alliance uh, with countries but, who share similar views. Which is in, uh, I'll just say it one more time, Mr. Jose, thing. it's a nuclear defence alliance. Now, SNP's position used to be against NATO membership. You weren't just in favour of getting rid of the nuclear deterrent, you were against membership of NATO. Wouldn't that be a more consistent policy uh, in that you would not then be under a nuclear umbrella? I'm sorry, Andrew, you're labouring under misapprehension. Most NATO countries do not hold nuclear weapons. That's not They're my not point, and you know that, Mr. Many, Hosey. Many, they are covered by the NATO get, nuclear don't, don't, umbrella. Don't get, ang don't get angry, Andrew. Don't get angry. Well, Andrew. I get angry when, when, when people politicians obfuscate and tap dance around quite simple questions that voters have a right to have answers to. Well, I've answered your question. All right, yes, then we'll we let the vote stay a member of NATO. That. That's right. sensible, but we should not hold nuclear weapons like the vast majority of other NATO countries. Very well. What's the UKIP position on this? Uh, well, interestingly, I can think of a country that gave up national, effective national mm. control on nuclear mm. weapons. It's called the Ukraine. And I don't think that will, in return for fairly vague assurances, I don't think historians will come to regard that as the most sensible of decisions. In fact, it was a disaster. So, of course, we should have our independent nuclear deterrent. And what's more, UKIP is the one party that will commit to 2% of uh, GDP being spent on defence. Foreign Secretary, if you end up uh, back in coalition with the Lib Dems, and that's a possibility. Uh, they don't want four submarines, they want three. They don't want continuous, they want a part-time deterrent. Will you agree to that? Is that on the negotiating table or are four subs non-negotiable? Well, as I've just said, we are going, we only need 23 seats to gain an overall majority and that is what we are aiming for. <laughs> What's the answer to my question? A conservative uh, government. Is, is the four We've, subs a red line or not? The Liberal Democrats said all sorts of things after the last general election, but we've now carried out the let Trident me try alternative review. One more we, time. Well, let me are the, the four question. subs a red line or not? Yeah, because CASD is an absolute commitment so that's a that we've yes. made, maintaining CASD, right. and the Trident Alternative Review has definitively shown that it cannot be done with three boats, okay. which is why Ed Ball's comments are, are so extraordinary. We need to leave it there. We've overrun a bit, but it's an important subject.